This is Pete Jones, and you are listening to the Dragons Are Real podcast. In this episode, I'm going to talk about Troika, the numinous edition by Daniel Sell. But before that, we have a call in from Ivy Shorts. I love that Spike Pit did an unboxing call-in. That's fantastic. So much fun. I'm glad you guys had fun getting together, too. That's fantastic. That's what it should be. Just fun. Gaming and just fun. Glad you're having a good time. You're right there, Ivy. Absolutely brilliant call from Colin. Knocked out of the park again. I've got a plan to get him back. So today I'm going to um, look at a new edition that's just arrived in the house. It's Troika. The Numinous Edition by Daniel Sell. I saw this on one of the OSR blogs and had a quick look at it and I thought, wow, I've got to pick this up. It's based on the old fighting fantasy rules. Um, they were a set of books back in I think it was the 80s, 90s, where um, each uh, paperback book was an adventure. They gave you some rules and basically you played it alone at home with. And if you didn't have any mates that uh, role played, you could play an adventure on your own. So that's based off the fighting fantasy rules. So uh, Troika is a hardback digest size book. Great quality, I have to say. The inside and the outside uh, front covers uh, contain uh, important tables that you roll on. I first saw this in Lamentations of the Flame Princess and I think it's a great idea. And they're flicking through straight to the front cover, back cover, and uh, you're there. So what is um, Troika? It's Daniel's weird and uh, wonderful fantasy setting. He, he calls it a science fiction, fant- a science fantasy RPG. And boy, is it that. So, character creation. Basically, you have uh, three skills, three attributes, which are skill, stamina, and luck. Skill starts on 1d3 plus 3, stamina is 2d6 plus 12, and luck is 1d6 plus 6. And every character starts with a few basic provisions. And then you pick a class or roll for it on 2d66 and it will generate a number between 11 and 66. And uh, these are the core of Troika, uh, the different types of uh, character classes and boy are they different. Each one that comes uh, with a description of what the, uh, what the character is, what possessions they've got and what advanced skills they've got. And these skills vary for different characters. And each one of them comes with some uh, hand-drawn evocative art as well, which is a strange style, but it really fits in with the the look of the book. So, uh, for example, uh, let me just uh, give you uh, one of the characters you can roll uh, on the book. It's called the Gremlin Catcher. The description is, No matter what country, sphere or abstract dimension you may find yourself in, be assured that gremlins will be there digging their warrens and bothering nice people willing to pay you a shiny penny to bash their little heads in. His possessions are a small but vicious dog, A flat cap, a club, a sack, 1d6 empty gremlin jars, and a jar with a pissed off gremlin inside. And then it lists the advanced skills as 4 in tunnel fighting, 4 in trapping, 2 in sneak, 2 in awareness, 2 club fighting, 2 tracking, and 1 swim. And those are the characters. As I say, there's a d66 versions of them, each one's different. Uh, Some have magic, bells, and each one is completely different and... It gives something for the uh, characters to latch on to to start with. So the uh, rules, there's two two rolls in Troika. There's roll under, and basically you roll 2d6 with the intention of scoring equal to or under a number. And that's usually in an opposed situations uh, for things like uh, climbing a wall or picking a lock. And the other type of roll is the roll versus, where both, uh, both people or combatants or c- contestants roll 2d6 and add any bonuses and compare the result with a higher total winning. And if you're fighting, uh, the loser takes damage. So uh, how do the uh, skills uh, work? Basically, you add your skill to your advanced skill. So if you had a skill of 4 and the specific skill had a score of 3, when using that skill, you'd be have a bonus of 7. Your luck you can use to negate damage or to negate bad fortune. And whether uh, you succeed um, or fail on the... To test your luck, you must roll less than your current luck score. And every time you test your luck score, your luck goes down. So it's a diminishing return. Obviously, uh, when your luck is zero, then you've run out of luck. Your stamina is your hit points. And again, if that's ever reduced to zero, you're dead. The initiative system 
is a bit different. It reminds me of the uh, Bulls action rules, uh, war game rules. Basically, you have a number of tokens which you put in the bag, two for each character, and then the number for the uh, bad guys, and end of turn counter. You mix them in the, in the bag, and then you draw them out, and whoever's token you draw out, it's their turn. Some people don't like this, because what can happen is uh, that uh, one side will, their tokens will be drawn out, and then the end of turn might happen, so you might not get a turn straight away. But it does randomise it, I don't know why Daniel went with this decision, but uh, he has. The rules are very simple, uh, things that covered are uh, um, actions, um, fumbles, drowning, encumbrance, damage, and armour, and uh, experience. Uh, there's a description of all the um, skills, probably about 25 odd skills. There's a section on items, and uh, items can uh, give you bonuses uh, when doing rolls. And then we move on to uh, spells. Um, spells are, are like a skill, um, you get uh, points in it, and uh, the skills are another area which uh, make Troika shine. It's not your normal magic missile and um, sleep. These are some weird and wonderful spells that um, Dendos cooked up. Oh, I'm going to pick one at random. This one's called Cockroach, which uh, costs five to uh, cast. A popular spell that turns troublesome folk into humiliated animals. The target must test their luck or skill for enemies or be turned into a significant creature of the wizard's choice. And it lasts forever. And these spells are just really evocative for the setting and there's probably 30 of them bells here to uh, pick from. There's also a, a description on uh, how to create animals, uh, enemies, and there's a few uh, test enemies here, a bestiary with some weird and wonderful uh, creatures. There's the odd uh, one you may recognise, like a dragon or a goblin, but there's uh, quite a few more that uh, have been created by Daniel, and uh, some really weird and wonderful ones. And uh, for the uh, creatures, uh, you get their name, their skills, stamina, initiative, and armour values, uh, any damage for any weapons they're using. Then there's a, a, a description of the the race to give uh, the GM some idea on how to run them. And then each one has a table called Mien. And basically it gives it's their demeanour. So you roll a, a D6 if you're not sure how they're going to react. So for a, a goblin, they can be curious, dismissive, preoccupied, gossipy, over friendly or paranoid. Then uh, as we get to, to near the back of the book, there's an introductory adventure called The Blank Mange and Thistle. Following that, there is a character sheet. So, uh, what can I say about Troika? It's weird, it's wonderful, it's very simple, and you can uh, get the book directly from Daniel. I'll leave a, a link in the show notes, or you can get it as a PDF. And I can highly recommend it. It's, it's, it's different, but it's the character classes and the spells that really make Troika something um, a little bit special. You've been listening to the Dragons Are Real podcast. You can contact me by leaving a message via the Anchor app or visit the podcast website petejones.neocities.org or on OSR Anchorites at the Audio Dungeon Discord. Thanks for listening. The opening music is Siesta by Jazar. The closing music is Controlled Distress by Biz Buzz Studio.